if I was the best candidate for the position, if I was selected for that position, that I not walk away because it'd be important for other women, for other young women, to, to see a woman in that role. I'm Dr. Andrea Pusick, and I was president of the Plastic Surgery Foundation from 2018 to 2019. Yeah, I think one of the reasons that it was hard to imagine a, a career in plastic surgery was because I really didn't see any other women in, in the field. And I think it was something, well, I could, um, I could maybe imagine it for myself. It was only until I started to actually see other women that I, that I could say, huh, you're like me, and maybe I could do that. So I think, um, so an example we saw, Dr. Carolyn Kerrigan was one of my mentors early on when I was in general surgery. And it was really important to me to see that Carolyn was there and she was... Um, she was a very prominent, successful plastic surgeon. What I also saw was is that she had a great marriage, and she had lots of kids, and had a really great family life. But I can actually, I have some proof that this actually is possible. There's certainly, part of the reason that we don't see women at the top of leadership is because we're losing them early on in their careers, and they're not either able to, from an academic perspective, they don't choose academic environments because it's just too difficult to do that and have children. Um, and so they make, they make a decision there that way. Involvement on national committees and national organizations, again, they make decisions. I can't do it all, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But the end result is that then we don't have a very robust leadership chain of women, and you can't just completely put a quota at, sort of at the presidential level because people need to have been involved early on to really be able to understand the organization and be effective leaders. But you can't expect young women in that role, in that position in their lives, in that very vulnerable time in their lives, to be the force for change. It needs, it needs senior women, like myself. Um, it, it needs senior leadership, male leadership, to recognize that, that something has to change. So I've worked for many years with an organization that provides reconstructive surgery to women and girls in the developing world, and it's something I'm very passionate about. These, I, the, the teams that, uh, that we work with are all female teams. The, the kinds of, of surgeries we do are mainly related to burns, where women have either um, sustained injuries from domestic abuse, so acid attacks or kerosene, or, um, or injuries related to just accidents, so kitchen fires are very common. In, these, in societies where it's just very difficult period for women, and then with these injuries, it becomes even more difficult. And when they see a group of women coming, arriving to look after them that have flown across the world, it just sends it, um, the look, the hope that it gives them, I think, is just very important. And I think so that was, I've seen that over and over again. The, it's, it's both, it's not just fixing the physical problem, but it's also, it's, it's a sense of solidarity. As sometimes the only woman in the room, or and in sometimes stressful situations, there is a pressure to act, you know, act a little bit like the other guys, act like the men around the table, um, as a resident, act like the other male residents. And I think, so the way I've learned to, to deal with that is to just be myself. I think that representation of women is, is a wonderful thing, but if we come into that and then we just try to act like everybody else in the room, then we're not actually we're not representing women. And I think that's kind of the thing is, is it's not just enough to just be there. You have to be there and be yourself because that's where our contribution lies.